Folks, we're going to have fun. I promised you a dessert. Cook with me. I'm doing my special lemon pound cake with a homemade glaze and strawberry topping. Right here on my take on Home and Garden. Folks, a lot of you are used to a strawberry festival like back where I come from in upstate New York. The churches, the communities would have them. They'd have a peach festival, an apple festival, something I really miss. Anyway, they're all over the country and the church ladies bake their goodies, you know, <laughs> really good stuff. And you might be used to a strawberry shortcake, you know, which was is a simple biscuit with sugar in it. You might be used to a pound cake, but I'm telling you what I learned over time is a little lemon with strawberries just wakes it all up and makes it amazing. Let's check it out, guys, and see what I'm cooking up for you today. Okay, guys, today we got our old standby Crisco All Vegetable Shortening. We got two loaf pans. I'm going to medium grease those, and then there's our two cooling racks. We're going to use our wonderful extra large Florida strawberries and we're cutting the tops out with our paring knife and we're going to get them to this point here and that is two quarts okay just so you know we've got a little wonderful little grater hand grater hand chopper, an amazing beautiful lemon. We have our mixing bowl right now with four cups of flour, all purpose. We're going to use a little salt. We're going to use powdered sugar in our frosting homemade and granulated sugar in the cake. Vegetable oil real lemon by Uncle Wally's baking powder vanilla flavor we got four eggs today and real butter we have a shot glass for measuring out the lemon juice a one cup measuring cup and a two Okay, guys, that's the most of what we're going to use today. We're going to use milk, too, and that's kept in the fridge till I need it. Alrighty, guys, I'm telling you, heaven is so excited about having this pound cake out. There's a big thunderstorm of applause going on here, right here outside. Hopefully, it doesn't bother our show. Now, I have a basic pound cake recipe and it's pretty typical and I we will link it for you of course in the video let's get cracking some eggs this is in a one loaf batch but I'm gonna do a double batch like I talked to you before anytime I cook I'm gonna make a mess I'm gonna make a double batch so even if I freeze one, you know, I'm going to make a double. Okay, so two cups of flour, but we're going to go with four. Okay, one cup of sugar, regular sugar, is going to be two with our double batch. Three teaspoon baking powder which is going to be six. That seems like a lot to me. And that's going to finish that can. Teaspoon of salt, which means two. Three quarter cup milk times two. 
which is a cup and a half all together. Don't you just love these fresh ingredients already? It just, oh, you just have to think about what we're building here. And a quarter cup of vegetable oil is going to be a half. And I'll tell you, that's not bad compared to some other recipes. And then here's where we get away with less vegetable oil because we're using butter. Quarter cup. So we're going to use a whole stick. And now you understand where the pound comes from in pound cake, I think. <laughs> That's some of it. Sweet and buttery. And it is a heavier kind of a cake. Alrighty, we're getting there. Now, we got our oil, we got our butter, we need four eggs. You bakers out there, you know how to crack your eggs without getting shells in. One teaspoon vanilla. Now that's going to be two because we got a double batch going on here. Now this is where you can jack up the regular pound cake to a lemon. Okay. A reasonable shot of lemon juice there and again okay so not to the top and we can give it the old taste test I think we're ready to beat some eggs I like to tame this down a bit before I turn on the electric mixer so I know it's not going to go all over the place and you cooks out there know what I'm talking about so we're going to get that reasonable so you don't get a puff of flour in your face or an egg yolk across the room, right? Let's try it on low, low. Alrighty, oh my goodness. Now you're just going to turn this a bit. That butter could have been softer and then give me less trouble and you but that is what makes this a pound cake that real butter oh my goodness look at the color okay a couple of little things since I gave it the old taste test it's really close and I was careful with the lemon juice but I'm going to do one more reasonable jigger or shot, whatever you're used to calling it. Then I like to take the rubber spatula and keep that down off the sides so it gets mixed. Okay guys, we're going to take our little spatula here and we're going to grease these pans with that Crisco all vegetable. You can use a piece of paper towel. I prefer not to get it on my finger, but this little sp flexible spatula is pretty nice. Now we've got our wonderful batter, and I'll tell you that last shot of juice really kicked it up just right. We'll divide this batter up in the two loaf pans. And your best friend here, of course, is your rubber spatula. It gets that all cleaned out for you, like amazing, right? The smell already. I am just going to pop these in the oven now. And depending on your oven, you'll cook these at 350 for 60 minutes. Check on them before that. And like I'm going to because our oven is hot. 
the recipe says 60 to 70 so we're gonna go and look at it at 50 and then we won't be overdone and we'll give it the toothpick test you cooks know that one you put your toothpick in if it comes out dry it's done if it comes out wet obviously it's not done now we're gonna prepare the frosting and the topping okay we're gonna finish up coring these beautiful berries now you want to stand your paring knife straight up so you don't lose much of that berry I'm gonna cut these in half seems like a shame to quarter these beautiful big berries but let me tell you when strawberries are in season some of you know this you cannot buy the frozen cheaper I looked at it okay they're already cut up and partially smashed for you now I'm gonna save about five of these medium size or smaller ones for decoration on my cake these I think are nicely ready to smash and just a light dusting of powdered sugar to keep them honest if you have sour berries you'll might want more these are not for the most part sour but we don't want them to jump up and bite you on the nose either so we're gonna take our masher and try to keep them in this <laughs> small bowl I think I need a transfer because the berries are just gonna make a little more than I thought which is perfect okay now I can work now I can move this thing we're gonna cut and smash berries and we're gonna show you what that looks like when we're all done okay guys so I'd really like to show you the difference between your recipe and or your mom's whichever one you use that makes this my take on a lemon pound cake with strawberries okay we're gonna take this grater we're gonna go to the just off the end in fact we can get rid of that end let's do that and then it's not in the way at all grating the peel right into our topping you'd think you were in a lemon orchard with this smell here now now I'm gonna take that funny end okay we do have a seed to remove I'm gonna take that fresh juice up from the end and put it in that topping that's it done that's done let's finish stirring and mashing lemon zest and lemon juice fresh off the end of that beautiful lemon now I want one eighth inch slices for my decorations just take your time go straight I'm only putting my finger there to use the tip as a guide not to take it off <laughs> so again just take your time and you won't have an accident you like this little point on the knife that's like that only because the other point broke off but I sure like it like this still 
Don't ask where I bought it. These hollow ground knives like this are just sometimes the sharpest thing and they go on and on and on. Okay, just a couple little things while the cake is baking. We got cleaned up. We're still right about at an hour for the whole project. Let's get back over to the island. A lot of you saw me make a frosting before from scratch. We don't want a frosted cake here. We just want to drizzle on the topping. Okay, so we're going to take about what we think is enough for two in the powdered sugar. And this is the easiest thing you'll ever do in probably in the world. I'm going to add just a dot of cream and see where that takes us. And I mean it doesn't take much. You see that reduce already? <laughs> Look at this. Okay, now I see we can probably do that again. And I mean it's just a thimble full. You cooks out there that know what I'm talking about. Okay, can you see this? I think it's right there. Alrighty, wonderful. Now that's done. Now I can pick up the rest. So I did want to mention, I put probably two tablespoons of lemon juice in my glaze icing also. I forgot to mention that step. Angela will be good enough to feather it in for us. Thank God for her, right? All righty. <laughs> okay, guys, we're gonna test this out. Get them out of here. They're looking really close. Look at those beautiful things. Toothpick test, it's dry. They are done. And what an interesting top on those. That'll shrink a bit. And we're gonna put those tins on the cooling rack so they can start cooling. And are those pretty, holy moly. Should we see if our Crisco did us right? Now I always like to run a knife around the loaf, but <laughs> the first run I did, I saw I didn't, I don't even need to. Let's look at this come out. Hello. <laughs> that one almost jumped out. Through the magic of television, no waiting for you guys, right? <laughs> like they used to say. Those will have to cool down for probably 40 minutes before I can glaze them, decorate them, and take you all around. Okay guys, I've got so much time waiting for these loaves to cool. I had time to make supper. And I figured I'd tease you with what I call Dad's Meatloaf. And it is a hit here in this house. No time to show you what I did to make it. Don't be whining out there. <laughs> Olive oil, salt on the potatoes, and the meatloaf goes in the middle rack together. 350 for an hour and 15 minutes. Alrighty folks, this is cooled down. I'm ready to show you how I would serve this. We'll save the end for later. Look at this, such a dense, wonderful thing. We're gonna take one thin 
lemon and one strawberry. By the way, anybody recognize this wonderful vintage Belvedere dessert plate? Compliments of Karen Allsbury. Now we're gonna drizzle. Okay, right over the berry, the lemon, then hopefully you have a wonderful vintage sterling silver ladle like this. Just a good full spoonful and put that on top. Let's try it so I know I'm not steering you wrong. I hope you can't see this tear in my eye, it's so good. <laughs> Do you have an hour and a half? You need your partner to mow the lawn or make the bed or make supper. Make this for them. You'll probably get more than you asked for. <laughs> Just like right here on my take on home and garden. Hey guys, thanks for coming by. If you liked our video today, give us a like, a share, a comment, send a friend over. Tell them how much fun we have right here. Check out those stores, guys. We know you'll find something in there you like. Thank you for the support. We appreciate everybody. And blessings to all the needy that need it the most. See you soon, guys, in the next Over the Top Amazing Fun Decorator Collector or Cook With Me video. See you soon. What am I going to cook next time?